Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the Hatchie River Conservancy. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Zach, before I introduce today's very special guest, what is something you discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So this past Friday, we held our annual antique tractor show. Though I'm originally from a small farming town, I generally don't know a whole lot about farming and tractors. I discovered a tractor I had never seen before. It's an LP60 John Deere orchard tractor that's used in peach orchards. And the coolest thing, though, is the owners of it, uh, Let me, uh, Jerry and Deborah Horn. Have, shout out to Jerry and yeah, Deborah. Shout out to them for real, because the past four years, maybe even longer, they've taken home the traveled the farthest award they come from texarkana arkansas wow why is there a tractor just for peaches well uh it was it has this thing that comes over like where you sit uh-huh. so i guess like sticks or stems from peach peaches trees don't scratch you. don't fall and hit you oh that's really interesting <laughs> um yeah the tractor show was really nice i i enjoyed the tractors but i also enjoyed there is a, a family that makes ice cream from their uh, hit or miss tractor. Hit and, and miss engine, yeah. Yeah, and it was they made homemade peach ice cream that tasted like my grandfather had made it. It was really good. So that was good. It was a, it was a successful uh, tractor show. I had a lot of fun. Okay, so Brooke Simmons. Welcome, Brooke. Hey, Scott. Thank you so much for having me today. You bet. So, Brooke is i don't know if this is a word or not but i'm kind of inventing it if it's not and i'm getting it out there i'm gonna start using it a lot brooke is an agtrepreneur um, <laughs> you heard it here first that's right have you ever have either of you ever heard that word used before agtrepreneur i haven't but i like it i like I, it i haven't I, heard it either i think it, it to me the definition is somebody who um is living in a rural ag related community and takes what takes their farm or what they're doing and makes it uh, appealing to tourists or to, you know, even local tourists. Um, and I think that's something that you've done. But before we talk about that and what your family's doing, I first want to talk about Hickman. That's where you're from, right? Yes, it is. I grew up in Hickman and I lived there until I moved to Murray in 2016. So tell tell us about your childhood and what thing, what it was like growing up in Hickman. Yeah, so very small town, um, very close-knit community, and I actually grew up in a farming family. So my mom is a row crop farmer. Um, she's the third generation, and so I always you know, knew about farming. And then here, fast forward to now, we've kind of taken our family farm and changed it in a sense, but it was just, I loved growing up there. It was a great, great time in my life. So how many um, acres, how many acres of farming did you live on when you were growing up? Um, she farmed about 1500 acres. Wow. That's a lot. Yes, yes for so sure. For, and she's, she's super talented at it. I admire her so much. For those that are listening who don't know exactly what, I mean, Obviously, the words row, crop, farmer kind of gives you an indication of what that is. But why don't you go into a little bit of detail for for those who may not know? Yeah, that means essentially um, your corn, soybeans, things like that. That's mainly what she's farmed my whole life. Um, And also wheat, other crops, really what you see in West Kentucky and West Tennessee. Now, let's talk a little bit about Hickman since you you grew up there. Did you live uh, (laughs) on the farm itself or did you live in the city of Hickman? We lived on a farm, um, part of it. We lived just a couple minutes out of town. Um, And then, yeah, it's just a huge farming community. So it's a tiny town nestled. It's the far western corner of Kentucky. And we're right on the Mississippi River. So it's really a unique small river town with a neat history. Um, which I've always loved hearing about throughout my life. I know it's so small now and it's not what it once was, but I always hear the stories of the downtown back in the day. And I think that's super interesting. Um, But yeah, we did live on part of the farm. And to me, Hickman is a fascinating uh, place because um, you can tell that there used to be a lot more there 
than there currently is, but I do think it's it's a great. I ride my bike around there a lot because the hills are are fun and oh, yeah. it's fun things to see. And um, to me, uh, the murals that are painted along the flood wall are really cool. Mm-hmm. Those were painted by uh, Karen Griffin, who was the. I looked that up before we talked because I was curious. <laughs> do you remember yeah. when those were painted? I do. They were actually painted fairly recently, um, maybe when I was in high school, but I love they really tell a story. And it's interesting to, you know, for me growing up there, a lot of the people that are on the mural, the families, I know them. And so that's really it's really interesting being from there and seeing those come to life. Two more things about Hickman and then we'll move on. Um, I also love that there is um, a Carnegie Library there Mm -hmm. uh, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, Andrew Carnegie as a way to give back to his communities of the United States and honestly the whole world he built them everywhere he built 2,509 Carnegie libraries so he invested in those and there's actually one um, there in Hickman that was put on the National Register in 1980 Um, and inside there is a history museum with historic photos and a lot of artifacts so I've never been inside I'm assuming you have I have, and I think it's one of the, I could be wrong, but I think it's one of the only ones left in the state. I think Kentucky maybe has two left standing. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure. There was one in Union City that was knocked down back in the 30s. Oh, really? You know, they're they're very uh, beautiful and ornate, and it's cool to see that one sitting there. Um on the water. The last thing about Hickman, well, there's two two things really. One <laughs> is Mark Twain called it a beautiful city. It, they say it was his favorite city um in the United States. So he did. He that's did. a claim to fame. And then number two, um, there's a great restaurant there called Hubs for anybody. Absolutely. Yes. When when and uh I th- when I have people come in from out of town, I make sure that we spend some time driving around Hickman first and then we go have dinner at hubs. So, um, I love it. Yeah. It's a great place. So, so you grew up as a farmer's daughter. You, did you ever have to actually, did you sit on the tractor? Did you actually get your hands in the dirt? Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You know how to drive a tractor? I do. I do. I used to help sometimes. Why weren't you at the tractor show? I know. I love it. I love the tractor show. You should have been here showing off a tractor <laughs> or showing off flowers, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So, Absolutely. so you, you, your, your family worked in agriculture, you yourself, I'm sure at some point in high school, I bet you were in uh future farmers of America. Were you in, were you in that? I think I was for maybe one year, but I didn't, I really wasn't that into it, which is so funny because you think I would have loved it, but yeah, I think I did it maybe one year so in you, high school. So you clearly started having different aspirations. What what um, did you, you know, when you started getting ready to leave high school and go into college, what field did you want to pursue? Well, I actually, throughout college, when I first went to Murray, I had no clue what I wanted to do, like most people. Um, <laughs> Zach, went to, actually, Zach went there, too. Did y'all go together yeah. at the same time? We um, probably when, when did you start? 2016. Oh, I graduated in 2014. <laughs> we okay, barely so missed each other. You <laughs> barely, you barely missed each other. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, but I actually, once I was there, I wanted to pursue a career in banking. And if you know me, you, that probably shocks you. But so I did that uh, my senior year at Murray. I interviewed with a few banks. I just, and I think it didn't work out for a reason. Um, so then I moved back here to Union City and I actually started working at the Chamber of Commerce. That's how I met you, Scott. Um, Mm -hmm. and I worked there for three years, loved it, loved getting to know everyone in the community. And then I really got into community involvement and that was kind of what I did for three years. And then my, um, my grandmother actually passed away shortly after I left there And we had always talked about doing a flower farm, my mom and my aunt and I with her. And it just kind of after that, we thought, why not? Let's just let's go for it. And so we started the flower farm in 2023. And so we're on our second year, second season right now. And it's just been a huge blessing for all of us. We 
love it. It's an excuse for us to spend time together. And so it really, I think banking didn't work out for a reason for me. <laughs> and, and that's honestly what I tell young folks, just dive in and start doing things until you find something you love to do. Um, Absolutely. So in a nutshell, tell us, you know, your elevator speech for what is the flower farm? Okay. So when you come to our farm, it's a you pick flower farm right about at two acres. Um, and so you come to the farm, you buy a jar or a bucket and you get scissors and you get to actually walk throughout the farm and pick your own flowers. And so you just pick, fill your bucket or your jar up and take it home, enjoy it. And we also, we do a lot with photographers. Um, we offer events, different things throughout the season to get people to the farm. But our main, our main thing is that we're a you pick flower farm. Now, um, as um, an ag entrepreneur, are you uh, also trying to think about what you can do other times of the year so that you've constantly got a stream of income like hay rides or, you know, I don't know what, I'm not Absolutely. an ag entrepreneur, so I don't, I don't have good <laughs> ideas, but what, but what are you creative. doing? The, yeah, well, thank you. What are you doing the rest of the year? Um, so I'm glad you asked that because this year we actually, so last year was just trial run, you know, first year we stuck to what we knew. Um, this year we ventured out into the fall season. So we're going to have pumpkins, a corn maze, um, we really want to expand our season this year into the fall. And so we're actually going to be probably sharing that in the next few weeks, kind of what we're planning on doing. But that's our goal for this year. And then we actually have already planted different varieties of flowers that are early bloomers. And so we'll have our season will start sooner next year in the springtime. So well, let's go back to the beginning. Your aunt, what was her background? Was she a farmer as well? She does not farm. She is actually the administrator for a nursing home. Okay. So and she has so a business background. She does. Um, we all three have other careers as well. My mom, she farms and she owns a flower shop in Hickman. And then I also work with my family company, Union City Paving. And so I'm here full time. And then my aunt is at the nursing home. So we're really, we always joke and say, you never know where the day will take us. We're all over the place. Right. You guys have everything. Hey, you can answer a question for me. They just paved <laughs> the road uh, in front of my house and I got tar all over my white car. Um, oh, no. What, what do you, can I use Gooby gone on my car? I think so. I okay. think so. That doesn't sound very off. confident. You're a little hesitant there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. I, I am going to, you know, I was like being really careful not to get tar on my driveway. And then I just happened to look, my neighbor said, did you get any tar on your car? And I was like, oh, I did. So I got to get that off. Um, so um, let's go back to when you guys got together and your grandmother had always kind of wanted to do this as well. Um, talk me through some of the steps. How does one, how does one suddenly end up with a flower farm? Yeah. So um we actually, the farm where we are located, my grandmother's house is across the street and my mom's is next door. And so really our first step was picking a place. And so we were like, we have to do it here, just right at our home. It's just fitting. And so that was an area that my mom farmed with corn and soybeans. And so we kind of just partitioned off an area to try um, our flowers. But the biggest thing for us starting out was figuring out what we were going to name the flower farm. And so um, we kind of threw around a few ideas and we couldn't really settle on anything. And then one day we were sitting there and I was like, let's call it first love because in our family, and it started with, I believe my great, great grandmother. Um, when everyone gets married, they get a set of first love silverware. It's a pattern silverware. And so that was kind of, something special in our family. And I had just recently gotten married and gotten my set. And so that was kind of the spark for the name. And so we came up with our name and our location. And then we just, we planted two or that year, one and a half acres and just prayed that they 
were successful because we had never planted that many flowers before. <laughs> and so you just, you know, your mom's driving, your mom gets on the tractor. I know oh, that yeah. farming, farming is a lot more, you know, than just driving a tractor. So I do acknowledge that. And I, <laughs> it's, you know, you have to be a business expert. You have to know weather, you have to know science. You have, I mean, there's a lot behind farming on the scale that your mother farms. So, but I, but in this particular case, did she just get on the tractor and start making rows? We did. We did. And we all were there. Um, once the flowers came up, we hand pull every weed in the field. I mean, it is a labor of love and we just get out there and we spend time and talk and it's a lot of work, but it's super rewarding because at the end of the day, you know, it's when you see a family come to the flower farm and take photos and enjoy themselves. It's what it's all about. Just making memories as a family. See, I have uh, a row. I have a section on the top of a hill by my house that I planted um, a bunch of zinnias and some wildflowers and a few other things. And, you know, it basically it's a patch of weeds with a few flowers in it now. So, I, you know, kudos to you guys for knowing. <laughs> Clearly, I did not know what I was doing, but, um, you know, I think it's all in the soil. Is that the key? It's all in the soil. You got to have good Big soil. Big part of it. Yes, and we do cover crops in the winter time to put nutrients back into the ground. Um, so we've got a few tricks up our sleeve. You need to come hang out with us, Scott. I know. Maybe I'll get a part time <laughs> job there. Um, there you go. Uh, I, I I need to learn how to drive a tractor so I could uh, I could help do that. Maybe the science part. You could I'll do a grand do. entrance for the tractor show next year. Oh my trainee. goodness! Absolutely, that would be great. I love it. <laughs> now, speaking of the tractor, show, I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, I'm going to ask you about a, another um, entrepreneurial uh, thing that I know you guys are doing. So let's go to the break and then we'll be right back. For many, the Hatchie River is a restorative sanctuary and place to feel connected to something larger than ourselves. The Hatchie River Conservancy is working to conserve and sustain the river's natural integrity and scenic beauty for generations to come. For more information on how you can help, visit HatchieRiver.org. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Brooke. We're with Brooke Simmons. Um, we're talking about um, her uh, life as an ag entrepreneur. Um, you guys are doing great things with your farm, but I know I have bought flowers from you before off of a truck. So talk a little bit about that. Yes. So I actually have a mobile flower truck that I take around. Um, I do a lot of pop-ups at boutiques and events, festivals, I'm actually going to be at the Real Foot Arts and Crafts this year for the first time. And so that's exciting. But yeah, so we pick our flowers from our field and essentially take them on the road and take them to things to sell as well as allowing people to come to the farm. And so what what inspired you to want to give that a shot? You know, I don't know. I just I think I just loved the experience of making your own bouquet. And kind of wanted to offer that up to other people in the community. I think that's really probably what started it. And then it just, it grew into a lot of other things as well. But I just love, I love helping people make a bouquet that they take home and enjoy. And it's just an experience. It's not, it's retail, but it's also creating an experience as well, which I think is really important. And then the bells and whistles of that kind of thing, you first thing you've got to do is find a truck. So how'd, how'd you go about that process? Because you want one <laughs> that actually, works. Yes. I bought a truck that was a forklift repair truck whenever I purchased it from a man here in town. And I, it still had parts in the truck when I bought it. So cleaned it out, steamed it, repainted it. I mean, it was a project. My husband thought I was crazy um, and we just completely rehabbed it. And so now when you get in the truck, we have hardwood floors, it's painted white and it's just looks like a totally different, uh, totally different thing. But it's actually, it started as the forklift repair truck, box truck. So when I describe it to people, I say, it's like the UPS truck that comes to your house 
but a lot cuter. <laughs> right. I was going to say it's very upscale looking, <laughs> very fancy schmancy. You know, you definitely did. Did you do all that work yourself? We, it was kind of a family venture. Um, okay. We cleaned it ourselves, did the hardwood and then had it painted by someone that worked with us. And so it was just my pastor made the stickers for the truck. And so it was just a, a group effort and I love it. It is so much fun. Yeah. So th these businesses that you um, have uh, successfully put together, a lot of the folks listening to our podcast ha probably have ideas that they think, man, I, I wished I could do my idea. What are some of the things that you've learned along the way that you might, that you think might help um, others who are listening who want to try to do something like like these ideas? Yeah. I just always tell people, don't be afraid to give it a shot. I mean, I've had a million ideas that didn't work out, and that's okay. You know, you really find what you're passionate about, and you just kind of run with it. And if from the beginning, if it's something you're passionate about, I think you work hard, and it it just makes it, makes it work. And so... I think just not being afraid, giving it a shot. And I really sought advice from other people that I knew knew about what I was doing. So, I mean, my mom was a huge resource for me because she knew the business and knew a lot about all aspects. But just talking to people and getting ideas and, you know, don't be competitive. People are there to help you. So I think that's a big thing that sometimes we forget. Um, Zach? You have little kids. Have you taken your kids to anything like this before? I have not taken them to First Love Farms yet. Actually, my uh, my sister has, but I did pick flowers for my wife and daughter um, at the truck at our. Uh, you did, yeah. Yeah. Well, you helped me pick them, but I'll thank <laughs> you for that. That was the Farm Credit Mid America Pavilion opening. She was there for it that. It was. Oh, that's it right. Was. I think that's where I bought some too. Um, that's very cool. Um, so yeah, Zach, you're gonna need to go and visit, take yeah. them to for Hallow for thanks is it Thanksgiving or Halloween? What did you eat? Pumpkins? Are you doing pumpkins? Pumpkins, yes. Okay, so that's uh Halloween. Um <laughs> and are you gonna do uh like a hayride kind of situation? I think we should. I think, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Um I I like to just sit in the wagon and ride around. You know, so I'll I'll look, I'll come participate in your hayride too. Are you going to sell like apple cider or something like that? Is that what the vibe is going to be? I think so. I, we don't really know yet what all we're going to do, but I think we've got some big ideas. So I just I also love creating an experience for our community. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about Hickman, and it's such a small town, and it's but it's full of amazing people. And I think creating something for families to come to in our community is just it's a big deal and so i want to make it the best experience it can be yeah you know the thing about hickman uh that that uh struck me was the you know some of the buildings that are really cool looking but that are obviously vacant um and that was, would make a great like artist colony you know like mm -hmm. if a bunch of artists got together and could you know buy some of those buildings and make it a place that people would come um I guess that would be entrepreneur entrepreneurism, <laughs> um, but it would be that would be really cool uh, to do that Hickman it. as well. Um, are you participating in our uh, Pumpkin Village event that we're having? I am. I am. I'm really excited about it. I love Pumpkin Village. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see for for those listening who aren't aware. Uh, in the past, our grounds crew put Pumpkin Village together, but we thought, why not include more people of the community? So uh, Brooke and, and some of the other um, farms in the area and florists in the area are each going to take a little section of our settlement, and we're going to create a whole little village with their talent and their skills and their creativity. So um, it'll be fun to see what you come up with. Have you got an idea yet of what you're going to do? I think so. I have an idea. So we'll see. We'll see how that comes to life. But I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you for including us. Yeah. Hey, I, I can't wait to see what you guys do. I know it's <laughs> going to be cool. Um, so thank you, Brooke, for spending some time with us and telling us a little bit about what you're doing. What are your plans for the future? Anything anything we need to be watching for that we haven't talked about? I have a lot of ideas, Scott. I always laugh and say, I, I don't know if y'all are Enneagram people, but I'm an Enneagram 7. So you just really never know. 
what yeah. what the next thing is, but I've got some ideas of how we can grow and really make or form a destination. You know, we have people come from the surrounding areas right now, but I just, I think we have something special. So, and I love encouraging them to come to Discovery Park while they're visiting. Thank you. We always like that. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. You know, Agritourism, especially in Tennessee and Kentucky, you know, something that continues to grow, that continues to draw people from the more urban settings and environments. Great to get people out outside uh, exploring things, uh, whether it's flowers or peaches or, you know, orchards or, you know, whatever. It's good to get outside and, and experience um, agriculture, especially since this area is such a major um, agriculture producer for the nation. So. For sure. Thank you for everything you're doing. And thank you, Brooke, for being on our podcast today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks to all you listeners who've joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.